So, I've been a financial advisor for a couple of years now and I'm thoroughly convinced after having looked into the finances of thousands of people that your financial success is not so much dependent on how much you make so much as how you manage your money. I do believe the adage, it's not how much you make but how much you keep to be absolutely true. If you're going to be successful in managing your money, a budget will form an integral part of helping you to achieve this. It sounds easy enough when there's only you in the picture. But what happens when you get married and you have a spouse? People have different ideologies about money and for some people this can be their undoing. For other people, it can be their strongest point yet. In this video, I help you overcome the task of budgeting with your spouse together, hand in hand. So my name is Nyeko, financial advisor and also financial coach and this channel is all about helping you improve your financial literacy so that you can achieve financial freedom at an early age. If personal finance and entrepreneurship are topics that you are interested in, please don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time a new video comes out. Right, let's get into it. Hello and welcome to part two of overcoming budgeting with your spouse hand in hand. If you missed part one of this video, I strongly suggest that you check that out. Here's a little bit of what you missed in part one. Next up we have set goals. Turn budgeting into a romantic event. Think about all of the things that you each want to achieve and let your budget speak to these things. Say for instance, you guys want to take a trip as a couple sometime in the future. Set prerequisites that need to be met for you guys to be able to go on this trip. Perhaps you want to go on said trip in six months time. Pledge to one another that you will not be able to go to the trip unless you have paid off that credit card. And if you haven't paid off the credit card by the time the trip comes around, you will have to spend the money that you would have spent on the trip to settle the credit card. If you don't have a lot of debt, another goal could be to increase your savings ahead of the trip. And by savings, I mean savings that will not be used as part of funding the trip. This would be a good example of a short term goal. Create an incentive for achieving your goals. Create short, medium and long term goals and figure out what exactly it would take from the two of you for you guys to be able to achieve these goals. Find items in the house that you each love, put them up as collateral and agree that your items will be sold if you do not reach your particular goal so that you can reach this particular goal at the appointed time. For instance, my bass guitars are my world and in the case of my wife, she's mad about her paintings. We have both agreed that if we don't reach our medium term goal, each of us will have to part with one of these prized possessions. If we do not reach our goal, both of us would have to pawn something dear to us to help us to attain our goal. Of course, we need to be reasonable and allow for unforeseen circumstances such as a death in the family or any other type of emergency. But naturally, you have to allow for exceptions, some kind of extenuating circumstance that will force you to defer this goal, although these are best serviced through a healthy emergency fund. It is very important that you both have something to potentially lose. The last thing that you need to come from this is a situation where you guys are blaming one another. What my wife and I realized, oddly, after creating this system is that my main thrust for sticking to the budget was that I did not want my wife to lose her prized possession. She in turn also made sure that she did everything she could do to stick to the budget because she did not want me to lose what was dear to me. This inadvertently strengthened our conscientiousness and thus ultimately our relationship. Next up we have grow together. If you want to learn how to budget with your spouse, please smash that like button to let me know. As a couple, make a concerted effort to enhance your financial acumen. My wife and I both like to read and we like to read about marriage in particular. Not only has this been a great investment that has strengthened our relationship, but it has also made us much more willing to pick up any other book that we think can benefit our marriage and our relationship. 
my wife checks out every single video that I post before I post it. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, she wants to know if this video will make sense to someone who does not know much about finances. Secondly, she's trying to get into my head, understand how I see finances, how I see the world, and thus be able to understand me better. Over and above this, we read books together, we watch educational videos together, we listen to podcasts, we play financially educational games such as Monopoly together. If she comes across an article about personal finance or entrepreneurship that she likes, she shares it with me and I also have a look so I can see how she thinks as well and we can learn together. Again, the point is to make it romantic and fun, but you have to keep learning and you have to keep growing together. Next up we have allow for individuality. My wife and I have agreed to allow one another certain indulgences. This is probably the single most important element of our budget as it allows our budget to become sustainable. The only rule in this regard is that this indulgence should not be harmful to our physical health or the health of our relationship. This provision for such an indulgence takes shape in two forms. Firstly, a fixed monthly amount that each of us is allowed to spend without having to justify it. Secondly, a portion of our monthly budget is set aside for each of us for a quarterly, semi-annual or annual indulgence. I have spent an obscene amount of money building up my bass guitar arsenal and I still plan to add more to my collection. My wife and I are both appreciators of art. She loves her paintings, but some of these paintings, even to me, just seem like thick black lines on a white canvas. Through this allowance, we can both be allowed our indulgence without having to feel judged or feel bad about it. With an indulgence like this every now and then, a budget feels much less cumbersome and thus much more sustainable. It has also added so much value to our relationship. My wife and I always laugh about how we spend our indulgence allowance on one another at the end of the day. This has become yet another way in which our budget inadvertently strengthens our relationship. Next up we have avoid using credit lightly. If you haven't already, please smash that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time a new video comes out. This one happens to come quite easily for me and my wife, but I can understand how for some people this may be a bit more of a struggle. The way we view debt goes something like this. We will inevitably one day face a situation that demands from us financially more than we have available from our disposable income. Obviously, when such a situation arises, we will have to oblige and finance the situation. We could endure this big spend and then spend the next couple of months or years financing retroactively what we would have spent. We could also, not knowing what the situation is or when the day will come, but knowing that it will come, decide that we're going to start funding it today. Because we understand that our access to credit is something that we can use to build our wealth, we want to try our level best to protect our credit score. Thus, we avoid getting ourselves into situations where we have to find ourselves servicing debt under duress. Your mind right now may be listing all of these reasons why you in particular need to be in debt and how debt is something that you cannot live without. I don't expect this to make sense to everybody right away, but I have seen enough looked into enough finances to know that this is possible. Next up we have create rules and consequences. You need to create rules and consequences to see to it that both of you are inconvenienced if one of you should break the rules of your budget. Again, turning it into a blame event will most likely not edify your relationship. Hence, my wife and I have made it supremely important that both of us have something to lose if one of us should go against the rules. I cannot tell you how profoundly this has increased our motivation not to want to disappoint one another ever since we have adopted this approach. You are free to try out your own approach, but we cannot see how this cannot be universally applied to each couple. Make extra money together. If you would like to see more videos like this, please don't forget to smash that like button to let me know to keep more of them coming. This part of the budget speaks much more to my natural disposition. Saving money and budgeting are an important part of any financial management plan, but any plan that ends there will definitely bore me. I am much more excited by the prospect of being able to control money than being controlled by money. Saving money and budgeting sounds a lot to me like money is in control. Being deliberate about making more money sounds a lot more to me like I am in control of my money. My wife and I are both of the physical touch 
and quality time persuasions as it relates to love languages. This may sound romantic and cute, but it has made our life really, really hard when we are trying to make extra money with our extra time. We spend a lot of time together, each with our laptops out, trying to find new ways to make money together. With the internet being what it is today, this has become a lot easier, even if you are not entrepreneurially minded. Write down and revisit your agreements. If you are finding this video to be useful, please let me know in the comments. Writing down your goals just makes them more solid and creates accountability. I know this sounds cliche and like something you've probably heard before, but it is profoundly and prolifically true and cannot be ignored. The second reason to do this is as an even better motivation. It gives you and your spouse the opportunity to record and acknowledge and celebrate your victories. It serves as a testament of your successful teamwork and gives you the motivation to do it all again, once more, even bigger feats. Next up we have run your own race. Lastly, and most importantly, run your own race. Your husband may take longer to come around than Jane's husband did. Your wife may be making less money than Jane is. You may not have the same lucky break in your career as John did, even though you went to the same university and got even better grades than he did. You may have a child with special needs, parents that are a little bit more dependent on you. Stay in your own lane and your resolve will reward you at the end of the day. Thank you for watching this video until the end. If you found this video to be helpful, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, please smash that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can know every time a new video comes out. Have a lovely day. Cheers. So I've been running my financial planning practice for about eight years now. So I've been thoroughly exposed to all the methods that work and all the methods that don't work. And as an extension of this YouTube channel, I've also now started to consult one-on-one -on -one helping you with wealth coaching. We talk everything from credit, how to speak to your banks, buying cars, property investment, everything you need to know so that you can achieve financial freedom successfully. If you want to get in touch and schedule a consultation, contact me via the email provided in the description.